uh, wonderful to see you all and to welcome you this morning on our Welcome Back Sunday. Uh, glad to see so many familiar faces and, and new faces as well. Uh, special welcome to our first responders who are sitting in the front row whom we will honor today. And also a special welcome to our staff members who are sitting opposite them in the front row. A very warm welcome to our choir, who is back for the first time after the summer in full force, and uh, great to hear your voices uh, praising God once again. So welcome Sunday school children who will arrive in just a little bit, uh, and families who have been away this summer. Uh, this is a wonderful reunion today. It seems an odd juxtaposition that it also happens to be September 11th and the 10th anniversary of the tragedy that took place uh, right here in our community, uh, in the New York metropolitan area. We see 9-11 being remembered all around us this weekend um, from town events and county ceremonies and parks to uh, federal and state recognitions of the day. And in houses of worship in every faith all over the country today, uh, September 11th is commemorated. We also uh, see it in our media from the powerful picture on the cover of Time magazine, which had the beams of light coming out from New York City on a map of the United States, to interviews with President Bush on the National Geographic Channel this weekend. We are in the midst of a deep national reflection ten years later. I doubt if any of us have forgotten the horror of that day ten years ago. Even a decade down the road now, we watch the scenes again, and it feels like yesterday. The intensity of it all is still with us. And as one parishioner said coming in this morning, you know, it just feels like an edgy feeling today. Every one of us remembers exactly where we were on that September sunny morning when Within just a few hours of the attacks, we learned that thousands had died. 700 alone were lost from New Jersey. And except for New York, our state lost more citizens than any other from this evil and premeditated invasion. Well, this event called 9-11 changed each of us more than any other event in the last 50 years. I think it's important this morning that we look back and we try to recall and name what it is exactly that did happen. I know I've avoided it uh, myself. Uh, I, I've avoided it, but I, I think it's important to ask today, you know, where were we on that day? And how am I changed? How are you changed by what happened a decade, decade ago? I do think that 9-11 has made us a different people than we were before. Just as folks who grieve the loss of a loved one say that they will never forget that person that they love now that they're gone, so it is with us as an American people. We relive this day, and the staggering loss of it will always be there. Yet with time, we learn to live with that loss. That doesn't mean that it goes away. We carry it with us, and we ask God to help us carry it. So I wonder, how are we learning to live in this new world, this post-9-11 world, where there always seems now to be these added layers of anxiety onto our daily lives? For example, just this weekend, there's another threat, we've been told, and that raises our anxiety. There's this added fearfulness when we travel that we have to be shaken down at the airport and searched. We're always looking over our shoulder, make sure there isn't a bag sitting somewhere in a train station or on a bus where it shouldn't be. It's a world where our sons and daughters go off to fight a war against terror in desert and mountain terrain halfway around the globe. In this strange new world then, how should we respond? especially when we hear the gospel this morning that is about forgiveness. Believe me, I would not have chosen this gospel for this morning, uh, were it up to me. But this is the thing about the Episcopal Church. We have a lectionary. Um, we have a gospel assigned for each Sunday. And it's my obligation to preach the gospel to you. 
Peter asks what may, might be our question, especially on this day. Lord, how many times do I have to forgive someone? This is Christ's message. Not one time, not two times, not three, four, five, not ten times. Seventy-seven times. A big number. And his message uh, doesn't sit easily this morning. Should we forgive terrorists who committed such heinous acts against our nation? It feels hard for me even to approach this question with you. Is such horror forgivable? I expect that those of us gathered here this morning would have very different reactions uh, among our congregation to the question of whether we should forgive. Some of you would say, absolutely not. This is unforgivable. And others would say, how could it even be possible? And still others would say, we must not allow hate to be answered with hate. I think what this anniversary shows me, and maybe you, is that, you know what, we're not ready. We haven't recovered yet. But we have to put the question out there. It's in our gospel. Can we forgive? Because we're learning how to live in this new post-9-11 world. And we've got to learn how to integrate it into our faith life. Now studies show that in schools, children are not learning about 9-11. Why is that? It's because apparently there's no agreement on how the subject should be taught. In the history books, people can't seem to come together and decide how this should be set out. And that's, that's where we are. We're still feeling the pain. Whether it's the acute pain of a survivor or the dull ache of being a little further removed. Somebody was saying they were in Colorado when 9-11 happened. That's very different from living here in metropolitan New York City. But still, it was something that the whole country felt, that dark side of evil, uh, so unexpectedly. And we responded as a nation and went to war. But we have to ask ourselves, how do we resist our own dark side in our response. Jesus wants us to know that we have choices. May we not give in to bloodlust and revenge. Protection and security, yes. But vengeance does not belong to us, the scripture says. Vengeance only belongs to God, not to human beings. God the Almighty. And Jesus sets out for us the choice of forgiveness as the gospel choice. Now, there were three guys, uh, a, a rabbi, an Islamic uh, leader, and a Baptist minister, and they walked into a bar. <laughs> no, just joking. They actually came together, and they did a stand-up comedy routine together after 9-11, and they're still out there on the road. And in this routine, they addressed some of the most painful issues that they had with each other. So their point was, if we can go around and speak to people about what deeply distresses us with each other, maybe we can set some kind of example. And maybe when we laugh with someone, whether it's a stranger or a friend or an enemy, for one tiny moment, when you laugh with somebody, your worlds overlap. And maybe it's only a tiny moment, but that's significant, that, that one moment. That smile that you offer to a neighbor, might just be an invitation to grace. You know, humor can be a wonderfully healing way for us to start to learn how to forgive. But in this comedy show, Rabbi Alper uh, brought up, uh, you know, his recent trip to Israel. He said, you know, when I was in Jerusalem, I, I jumped in a cab and I was trying to practice my Hebrew. And I think the cabbie thought it was kind of funny when we pulled up to a corner and I said, behold, this is where I must descend. <laughs> he hadn't quite figured out his, uh, his modern Hebrew. And the Baptist, Susan Sparks, who uh, taught a humor course at my seminary in New York City, uh, she made fun of herself in the show. She said, you know, uh, Baptists, the one nice thing about being Baptist is that this theology of Baptist, short and sweet, like their idea of heaven, you ain't Baptist, you ain't going. <laughs> And that's like six and a half billion people are not going. And so if you look at a map and the land mass of the face of the globe, that's uh, everybody's not going unless you live in Texas and Alabama. <laughs> and alternatively, 
the third guy in this comedy, comedy group, Ajmar Usman, he riffed on what it was like to be a Muslim in America. He said, yeah, it's nice being back uh, in America. I just came home from a trip overseas where, yeah, nice to be home where I get dirty looks for being a Muslim. But since I was just abroad and it felt so totally different, people hating me for being American. <laughs> and I feel so patriotic. W.H. Auden once wrote, Love your own crooked neighbor <coughs> with your own crooked heart. If we can start at home uh, loving our neighbor next door, uh, if we can forgive ourselves, then we can begin to forgive others. Now, forgiveness uh, was defined in an article I read, and I wanted to share this with you. Forgiveness is the transcendent courage to absorb a despicable blow without being consumed by bloodlust for revenge. It's the transcendent courage to absorb a despicable blow without being consumed by revenge. Forgiveness is not some kind of largesse that we give because we have some kind of innate superiority over someone else. No. Forgiveness is the grace of God, transmitted through us. It's God's power, not ours. It's the ultimate witness of Christ's power in the world, Christ's love in the world. Now, some people misunderstand forgiveness. They think, you know, if I forgive, that means that I forget. I have to forget. Because there's some old adage we say, uh, forgive and forget. But no. Forgiveness is not forgetting. Forgiveness is remembering. We will never forget 9-11, nor should we. We should remember it, but we should try to make a conscious choice, the choice that Christ calls us to make, to make the world a better place than it is today. For our children's sake, may 9-11 never happen again. May we be a people of hope who can move forward. May it change us into being people who work to prevent bullying in our schools and on our playgrounds. May we work to stop discrimination against Muslims and the people of the Middle East and South Asia. You know, thousands of hate crimes have been documented in the last 10 years by the U.S. Department of Justice. And so we're reminded that the work of Christians is reconciliation. God is counting on us to be the bridge builders between people who don't understand each other. How can we build bridges of deeper understanding between different faiths and peoples? I think this is our most important ministry going forward. It's a very difficult practice that we are baptized into. Justice should not be denied, but forgiveness is something divine. We need to struggle with it. We need to wrestle with it. And we remember that when grace comes through to us, it's not by our doing, but by the power of Almighty God. You know, grace is always God-given. and Forgiveness frees us, just as the children of Israel were freed from slavery as they made their exodus across the Red Sea. And one commentary I read about this passage from Exodus says, it wasn't Moses who freed the slaves. It wasn't the people themselves who got away. It was God's power, God's power of grace that liberated them. It was an act of God. So on such a day as this, the 10th anniversary of 9-11, I want to encourage us to focus on hope, hope for the future, hope for a deeper understanding of the world we live in, hope for our children and the generations that follow us. We are Christians who hope in the resurrection and the newness of life. And we may not be ready personally for forgiveness, but we can remember the prayer that Jesus taught us, our Father who art in heaven. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we also remember the words he spoke from the cross. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. He said this to the people, he said this about the people who put him on the cross. He asked God's forgiveness for them. So Christ is still offering us a new choice, 
a new world where we don't have to live in fear. In the Eucharist, we hear Christ's life-giving message that leaves violence behind. This is my body, broken for you. Christ is the vessel of our redemption, and not for our sins only, as it says in the Gospel of John, but for the sins of the whole world. So may God grant us the grace to begin a new life of hopefulness, to begin to live out a new life of forgiveness, starting today. Amen. Amen.